Good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome. And thank you very much for, for joining us this morning for this briefing on the short-term tourist letting register. Uh, we have about 45 minutes this morning, so we will stick to that. Your time is precious and uh, we're conscious of that. Um, so I'm just gonna run through some introductions, uh, the agenda for our session, and just some, some housekeeping in terms of how this is going to work. But to introduce myself, uh, my name is Fergal O'Leary. I'm Head of Registration and Grading uh, with Fall to Ireland. And joining me this morning is Paul Kelly, who is our uh, CEO, Fall to Ireland. Also, Jenny DeSalles, who is our Director of Sector Development and from the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gwiltoch, Sport and Media, uh, Michelle Omani, who's a assistant principal in the tourism policy section. So just the agenda for this morning is that, first of all, as I said, I'll go through the, the details of uh, how the session will go. Uh, Paul Kelly will give an introduction to Falta's work and to the background um, to the short-term letting register. Michelle will look at the policy context and the legislation both in Ireland and in the EU. Uh, and then Jenny will look at a market overview and also Fall to Ireland's goals uh, and the work that we've done to date. Um, then I will run through what the requirements of this new register are and how it will work. And we know that there's been a lot of interest in the detail of this, so we'll give you as much as we possibly can. Uh, we have received, and thank you for them, we've see, received a lot of questions in the run-up to this uh, session. What we've done in terms of putting together the slides is we've answered as many as we can through the slide presentation, but uh, we also have a session specifically on questions at the end. And just let me commit to you, if we haven't answered everything, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it's because we mightn't have the answer yet, or we mightn't be able to give you the answer because it's not strictly within Falter's remit to do so, but we'll talk about those types of things on the way through as well. Um, anything that we don't follow up on here or answer directly, we'll come back to you afterwards. We have FAQs on our website uh, and we will update them and everybody will send a link. And also we'll get back to people um, where we need to individually as well. So I'll say a little more for now and I'll hand you over to Paul Kelly uh, just for an introduction to Falta and the work that we're doing here. Great. Thank you very much, Fargo. Thank you for that. Uh, my note here. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for, for attending today. I lost my notes. Uh, uh, but I really appreciate you coming on this morning to join us for this important session. Uh, and I suppose, first of all, just to just to say that, you know, in terms of everything that we're going to talk about this morning is still subject to, uh, to, to legislation uh, be, being in place. We were conscious that we didn't want to apologies that we didn't want to to wait until everything was in place because we're conscious of the of the level of uncertainty etc that is uh, that that's that's out there at the moment. So um, before Michelle and Jenny and Ferg will go through the details, I just wanted to kind of give you some of the context and um, uh, just basically around the short term register in general uh, and um, you know where where the initiative comes from. The, the establishment of the register originates from the housing crisis, as we all know, and this is a critical challenge that's facing Ireland uh, in relation to the supply of housing. There is nationally, as you're all aware, an acute shortage of long-term rental accommodation. And in this context, the tourism sector cannot exist in isolation of local communities' needs and the problems that they face. Fulge Ireland always works to develop tourism in a way that is uh, sustainable and complementary with the needs of communities, both economically and socially. And in this case, this means that we're going to have to find an appropriate balance between accommodation that should be used for long-term housing needs and accommodation that is more appropriate to short-term tourism lettings, uh, which provide vital employment and other economic and social benefits for local communities. And in line with the wider community needs for more housing, the tourism industry has highlighted that more residential housing for employees is also critical to the development of the sector. In addition, to this, in addition, the status quo is not really sustainable and, and many in the self-catering sector themselves have been calling for a register for many years. 
The situation currently is that roughly about half of tourism accommodation in the state is known and is regulated from a quality point of view, and the other half is kind of completely unknown. Now, if we in Fulcher Ireland have a full picture of the accommodation stock, we will be in a much better position to help drive investment and demand and visitors to where the capacity is. But obviously, if we don't know that, it's very hard for us to support the sector as well as we possibly could, and we do want to support the sector as well as we can. Um, but we are very aware that the introduction of the register has highlighted concerns and created uh, some concerns around the areas of kind of long term that have been there for long term uh, planning. And we're also aware that, you know, in terms of the stress that's involved in that uncertainty. Um, and we know that short term lettings is a vital source of income for many. Uh, and even though the introduction of the new register would not alter or impact upon the planning permission requirements that have been there, this register obviously has highlighted some of those long term planning issues and concerns. We have been working on a number of fronts uh, to try and alleviate that stress. Uh, firstly, this and other briefings that we'll be doing and the frequently asked questions or FAQs, as Fergus referred to them, uh, on our website are designed to answer as many of your questions as possible. Uh, we've worked very hard to, de to design a registration system that is simple to use and will take no more than five minutes to register a property. Uh, in relation to planning, uh, firstly, we want to, we've made, we're seeking to make sure that there's a six month clarification period. And this will allow everyone time uh, to adjust and to make sure uh, that the season ahead is not unduly affected for the, for, uh, for the longer term. And Folger Ireland is working with the Department of Housing, local government and heritage to get clarity in the form of published guidelines on planning issues. And it is our clear view that well-established businesses in tourism-dependent regions should be allowed to continue to operate uninterrupted. We will continue to make, uh, to make this case to government at every opportunity. We will also continue to work with local authorities across the country to ensure that any housing stock that is not suitable for private housing may continue to be used for tourism purposes. But to repeat, we will continue to offer as much clarity of what is happening uh, when, when we can. Um, so that's, that's it for me. Thank you very much for attending again this morning. Uh, and uh, I'm now going to hand you over to Michelle and uh, she'll take you through some of the policy context. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Michelle O'Mahony and I work in tourism policy in the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Sport, Goiltacht and the Media. Um, and I'm working on the legislation that Paul's referring to. now. Background to uh, the register is effectively in Housing for All, which was published in uh, September 2021. It included an action which requires Fulch Ireland to establish a short term letting register. And basically, that is what the legislation is doing um, no more and no less effectively. The, um, so, the legislation is currently in development. Um, and in the development of it, we're working very closely with Fulch Ireland and with the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government in relation to, est to establish, to give Fulch powers to establish a register and to maintain it on a nationwide basis. Um, the general scheme of the bill was approved by government in December uh, 2022. And since then, we're working on drafting on it. And it's been currently processed through the legislative process. It's gone for pre-legislative scrutiny to the Joint Directors Committee and um, that is ongoing and basically what it does the legislation defines what a short-term tourist letting in Ireland is which is basically a letting of 21 nights or less and the legislation relates to the advertisement of the short-term lettings and just to mention in relation to that it's very important to note that this legislation deals only with the register and registration and there is nothing to, whatsoever to do with planning or planning permission legislation in it and it doesn't impact in any way in, rela in relation to planning. It won't change any of the existing planning laws. The re this legislation deals specifically and purely with registration. Now it creates a new register for short-term lets and in doing so we're also bringing into line the existing Fulch Ireland registers um, for hotels and bed and breakfast, obviously to bring everything into line now that we'll have 
one register for short term letting, but it deals with nothing in, re in relation to anything outside of that and certainly doesn't deal with planning in any way. And as Paul said, uh, the department along with Vulture are very conscious of people's concerns around planning permission and therefore are working you know, on an ongoing basis with the Department of Housing you know, in relation to their development of guidelines for this. Um, the, in addition to us working in, on this bill at the moment, because this is actually a European-wide issue, the issue of, around accommodation and the movement from uh, long-term residential accommodation to short-term over a number of years, there's actually a proposal been developed by the European Union, which was published as well on the 7th of November. So there's, there's a regulation in progress through the EU at the moment as well too, and it's actually moved very quickly. And that will be coming into law quite quickly. And this is dealing basically with the same issue. Um, so that's, that's all in relation to that for now. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Jenny now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michelle, um, and uh, welcome everyone. Delighted to be here to talk to you today. So, as Paul mentioned, I'm going to talk about the short term lets market. Uh, short term lets are a key offering in tourist accommodation, and it has grown rapidly since 2009. But currently, because we don't have a register, we don't know what is out there. We don't know the types of product, the volume, and where they are. Using scraped data from online platforms, we estimate that there are about 30,000 short-term let properties. That's about 132,000 beds in the state currently, and these being advertised online. And up to 60 to 70% are full houses and apartments. The remainder are home share and other types of accommodation. And about 60% of the properties are associated with a host that has listed more than one property. Um, as I said, there is, current, uh, there is no current regulation or registration requirements, which means a lot is unknown. And by contrast, hotels and other types of accommodations do need to be registered with Fault Ireland. So using the scraped data, we have mapped uh, the number of properties by county for September 2022. Um, the exact location is not known, and as you can see from the map here, counties with large numbers are Dublin, Kerry, Galway, Donegal and Cork, uh, and the number of full houses and apartments is about 16,800, um, and note the home shares of more than 5,000 um, should have no planning issues whatsoever. So I suppose what's the goal of the work that we're doing here? Like we in Fall to Ireland are working to set up the short-term let's register in a timely and effective manner, which will allow for the first time to have a full picture of stock of tourist accommodation across the state, the product type, the number of beds, and the exact location. And this will significantly enhance Fall to Ireland's ability to promote and drive tourism investment in these areas. We have, uh, we in Fault Ireland have extensively studied similar regu regulations, uh, in particular across Europe, uh, and, and we have designed a quick and user-friendly registration system. It will take businesses no less than 10 minutes to register. I'm sorry, no more than 10 minutes to register. We have designed the register to comply with existing principles set out in EU law, including compliance by design, proportionality, no general uh, obligation to monitor and uniformity in non-discrimination as well as data minimization. So now I'm going to hand over to Fergal and he's going to take you through the requirements for business and how the registration uh, process itself will work. Hi again everybody. Um, so I'm going to start with the requirements for property owners um, and just before I do that and I'm, we, we've had a lot of questions about, and many of you who've joined us this morning will be registered with us. What if I'm already registered uh, or approved with Fall to Ireland? So while this will be dependent on the legislation, it is certainly Falta's goal that if you are registered or approved with Fall to Ireland already, it, you won't have to... Um, to, to fully re-register for the first year of operation. Importantly though, you will have to opt in because this is a legal requirement. You, have, you will have to tell us um, that you want to be registered. But as I said, for subject to the legislation being in place, um, 
those who are already registered with us for the first year won't have to pay a fee uh, and the registration process will be even simpler probably than what I'm going to outline here. So the fact that people are registered with us, that does mean something to us and we want to make sure that they are accommodated in an even easier way uh, when people are being registered. Um, your requirements, you will need to register online this is important. Um, all registrations will be done online, which will be a very easy process, which I'll go through. Uh, you will be required to provide accurate and true information when registering. This is a statutory responsibility and therefore the, the information must be accurate. Um, you will have to confirm that you meet relevant existing statutory requirements. So what do I mean by that? You will have to declare to us that um, if you do require planning, that you have it. But also, for example, you'll need to you'll need to tell us that as a business you're uh, compliant with other statutory responsibilities. And I'll I'll go through a little bit more of that in a minute. Um, again, though, just to pause for a second, it's it's really important. It's been mentioned already that a lot of people who are operating in this sector won't have to apply for planning permission. For example, if you're letting out a room in your home, then you in all likelihood won't have to, uh, there'll be no impact on planning permission at all. Um, if you're letting out your home for less than 90 days, again, um, there won't be a, a, an issue there. Uh, or for example, if you're a B&B &B with four rooms or less. So there are many, many thousands of properties who won't be affected um, by planning permission uh, at all, just in this uh, in this process. Um, but just there is an important point here that we have to make is that as a statutory register, you do need to declare to us um, that you are compliant with with the obligations that are currently on you. Uh, you will have to pay a fee. Uh, the fees are currently awaiting ministerial approval, and we hope to publish them before the, the end of the month. Um, but I. I will say that these fees won't be major or significant. Um, they will be. Uh, we're very conscious of the pressure that are that's on households and businesses at the moment, so we will keep them to a minimum. Um, then, when you get your registration number with us, you need to display that number on advertisements uh, that you want to use. So, for example, if you want to use Airbnb or Booking.com, you'll need to give them your your valid Fall to Ireland uh, registration number to be displayed on your ad. So the requirements on booking platforms, they will have to ensure that there's a valid short-term tourist let number displayed on all listings, uh, and they will have to include, uh, they will need to help you to make sure that you can input your number quite easily there. Um, so there'll be a form uh, when you're registering with them or you're updating your registration just to put in your number. Um, Booking platforms will be obliged to remove any non-compliant properties. So what that means simply is that if there isn't a valid Fall to Ireland short-term let registration number, then that property cannot be advertised. Uh, the booking platforms will also be obliged to give us information on the listings and the properties that they're advertising uh, periodically. Uh, and just the last one there, that's a kind of a technical phrase, Content moderation, all that means really is that every uh, year or maybe a little bit more often, they will need to give us details of what measures they took to make sure that only properties that have valid Fall to Ireland registration numbers uh, are on their website. So how will the register work? Um, as I said earlier, property owners will be able to register via a quick and user-friendly online portal. Uh, the details that will be required, and I'll run through these in more detail. We'll show you this, this slide, the screens in a couple of minutes. But what you will need to enter when you're registering for a number is your name and your contact details, the property details, what type of property is it, uh, how many bedrooms does it have, what capacity can it hold. There'll be a tick box relating to statutory requirements, and I know this is an important one, so I've, I've covered it a little bit and uh, I'll cover it in more specific detail and I'll be very, very clear about what the responsibilities are there. But you'll need to tick a box, you'll need to pay the fee, uh, and then 
and this is where we think this will help you to come in and to do this quickly, the number will be uh, issued to you instantly. So again, a lot of you on this call this morning are already registered approved with Fall to Ireland, and you know that there's a long process, longish process there uh, around getting your property approved and getting it um, assessed and so on. That is not the case here. There are no quality checks or inspections. Also, you will not have to upload any information or documentation to us. So uh, Jenny mentioned that the whole process should take uh, no more than 10 minutes. We hope it'll take a lot less than that. We hope it'll take three to five minutes per property. Uh, that's the way we've been running through it and testing it, but obviously your first time through will take a little bit longer. So up to 10 minutes is, is an accurate uh, assessment. So then uh, what you will need to do with your number, you'll need to give that, as I said already, to any booking platform that you want to register your property. The register will be live. It will be updated automatically. If you come in at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night and you decide that's the time you want to register with us, you'll go through, you'll spend five to 10 minutes and it'll be instantly updated. There'll be no waiting around. We don't want to delay people from advertising their properties at all. So this is why the process has been set up to be uh, instant uh, and very, very quickly, you'll be able to go through it. Um, we will do checks. Uh, there will be checks by the booking platforms of registration numbers. Again, that should be instantaneously. We're working with them to make sure that when you're registering, they can just ping our website and check to see if the number is valid. And if it is, you go straight through. There'll be no delay. There'll be no delay whatsoever in terms of um, your registration. Uh, Paul already mentioned this, and it's relevant to the declaring that you're um, uh, that you're consistent with all relevant statutory uh, responsibilities. For people who are unsure, there will be a six-month clarification period, and again, I'll show you that tick box when we come to it on the portal. And this will allow people who aren't sure whether they might need planning or whether there's another statutory responsibility, such as um, health and safety or environmental stuff, um, or food safety even, if you're, uh, if you're providing food in your property. Um, that's why we have made sure that there'll be a six month clarification period from when the register is launched, you'll be able to still register with us, uh, and, uh, and then you'll be able to take the time just to, to check uh, to do your own checks to make sure that, that you're happy with everything there. Uh, also, we are working, as Paul said as well, we're working with the Department of Housing and with lo local authorities to promote the importance of tourism stock and to ensure that, I think I'll say it straight out, that, that improved planning guidance is provided to you. It's clear to us from the information and the questions that we've got, before this register even started, that there is significant concern um, in the sector around, do I need planning permission or uh, what type of planning permission do I need? Um, so certainly we're working with the relevant authorities there to make sure that that clarity is given. I will, towards the end of this presentation, cover a couple of questions on planning as well, so we'll come back to that. So people have been keen to, to see the portal and there were a lot of questions around what this would look like. So I'll take you through this. Um, we've designed this with you in mind. Uh, we've kept the information requested to a minimum. Um, and importantly, and if, you're, if anybody is taking notes or writing things down, there is not a requirement to upload documentation. This is about you telling us about your property and us registering it. There is no, there will be no verif verification checks prior to issuing issuing an STTL number, and as I said, that will be in instant. Uh, these slide, these um, screens are pretty much final, but there might be a little bit of tweaking on the way to on the way through them as we finish them. So I'll I'll just caveat at that. So. As I said, the first thing that you'll be asked uh, to do once you've put in your email address um, and uh, you, you've given us your contact details is tell us about the property. And 
this starts with what do you intend to advertise? Do you intend to advertise a room in your home? Do you intend to advertise an entire property? Or do you intend to advertise multiple units at a site? Um, for example, a, a number of yurts, a number of clamping pods, or something like that. You tick on the relevant um, box there, and then underneath there'll be a drop down uh, which will detail a little bit more specifics in terms of what the property is you're registering. And then, as I said, this is a register. This register is designed to give us information about what is in the sector. So that's why we do want to know the number of bedrooms and the capacity as well. That's very important to us. Uh, I'll repeat it because it's important. There is no documentation to be uploaded here. It's you telling us about your property. Okay, so this again, this is a really important uh, part here. This is the second step. You will be asked to confirm that the property you are registering complies with any relevant statutory obligations. This might be health and safety, it might be planning uh, or whatever. Um, there won't be a huge amount of detail here, but what we will certainly do in our uh, FAQs and the information uh, that we're working on with the Department of Housing is give you as much information as we possibly can to make sure that it's easy for you to understand what your statutory obligations are. So there's two options here. Uh, you confirm that you understand the, the statement above, which says every property owner is required to fulfill and comply with relevant statutory obligations. Failure by a property owner to comply with statutory obligations may be a basis upon which Fault Ireland decides to deregister their property. That's the statement. I confirm that I understood the above and I'm happy to proceed. Or you want to avail of the clarification period, which allows you time to figure out, are there things that I need to be aware of? Are there things that I need to decide in terms of the property that I am offering? Uh, you can enter your air code here, and like a lot of online um, sites here, uh, the full address will pop up once you, once you enter the, uh, the website. Uh, again, you're providing just with property owner details here as well, um, where it is, which is important to us in terms of in terms of the registration system uh, and what it is you're advertising it's very important for us uh, here you will just uh, review the details um, and all that needs to be done here is just make sure that everything is correct uh, and at the bottom of that you can add another property if you wish uh, we do know from, from the information that we have that um, lots of properties, uh, maybe more than half, um, are owned by uh, more, more than, so one person owns more than one property, is what I'm saying there. Uh, so certainly we will make it very easy for people to register more than one property in this uh, process as well. And also if you have a lot of properties, because some people do, there'll be a, a bulk upload as well. Uh, and there'll be details of that on our, on our FAQs on the website for those people there. Uh, you'll be asked to enter your payment details and just uh, in common with other uh, payment um, facilities here. So this will take you to an outside uh, banking screen. We certainly in Falta will not be keeping payment details or anything like that here. This will be all separate. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the fees will be announced before the end of the month. Um, just one thing you might note is that the fees are per property. Okay, um, it's per property that the fee will be uh, um, relevant to. So having gone through that, which again, hopefully will take between five and 10 minutes, you will have registered with us. That's all that's required, nothing more. As I said, no inspection, no uh, assessment, no documentation to be uploaded, and you will get your short-term let number, and there's an example of one there. You then take that, it's valid for 12 months, you copy it out and you put it onto any advertisement or any property or um, booking platform that, want, that you want to advertise their property. Uh, it's as simple as that in terms of the registration process. 
So I'm not going to spend much time on this, but uh, obviously it's our goal in Fall to Ireland to help people to be compliant. Uh, and to, what I mean by that is we will give you information so that you can decide whether you want to register with us. I guess it is important for, for us here today, though, to tell you that like any statutory responsibility, like a TV license or, um, or anything like that, uh, we do have powers uh, for both property owners and for booking platforms, particularly if people are, are giving us false information uh, or if they're advertising uh, a property with an invalid number or something like that. But what I would say is that uh, these are powers that we do need to have in the legislation, but we will work very, very hard to make sure that we don't have to use them and what I mean by that is we will help people to be very clear in terms of what their obligations are and what they're registering when they go through our process. We will make this, we will continue to make this as clear as we possibly can for people. So that's the end of uh, the slides, but we do have uh, a number of questions that, that we're going to go through. And again, thank you so much for for submitting these in advance. Um, a lot of them relate to planning. Um, and I guess something that's that's important to say here, and uh, it's Michelle said it earlier on, this register changes nothing to do with planning permission. Um, there is no impact of this registration on existing laws that are out there, whether they are planning, whether they're health and safety, whether they're consumer protection laws or whatever. But obviously the fact that this register uh, is being uh, created, that's highlighted a huge amount of, of planning issues that people have had and concerns that people have had for many years. So as Paul said, and as others have said already, we are working hard to make sure that we can get clarity from the Department of Housing and then give that to you so that you do have a better idea of what the planning requirements are. But just a couple of questions, which, which, we, which I will attempt to answer here. Um, so do I need planning permission? Uh, our property is not in an RPZ, will we need to register? So as I said earlier, not every short-term let provider will need planning permission and in fact it is certainly nowhere near 30,000 people will need planning it's way less than that so for example if you're letting a property if you're letting part of your home out you don't if you're letting for less than 90 days you don't um the rules outside planning or outside rpz's i think are a little bit more relaxed than they are internally um, but that is something that there does need to be more guidance on. Uh, what we have and will continue to advocate for is that properties that have been operating in the tourism sector for many years are allowed to continue to do so. So we will keep doing that. Uh, we'll, when will the planning guidelines be published? As soon as possible, we've been told. Um, I would hope that at the very latest they're published when the legislation is enacted hopefully we might get to see them a little bit more sooner but in that case you'll still have the six months to figure out what it means for you you'll be allowed to register with us with no problem at all um so you can you can register um with us and then the guidelines will be published and hopefully they'll provide some clarity uh, again, a question, specific question. Will I need to upload any documentation? Will I need proof of planning permission to register? No, you won't, is the answer. Uh, I've been operating for more than seven years. Does the seven year planning rule apply? So this is a difficult question. Um, a property that's been operating for more than seven years does not automatically become exempt. Rather, the local authority finds it, I think, difficult to initiate enforcement, proceed, enforcement proceedings in that case. So it is a difficult one, um, but again, it's our view, and this is what we're advocating for. People who've been operating in tourism for a long time, we do think that they should um, be able to continue, and particularly those who've been registered with us. Uh, a couple, one last question, I think. So there's been a figure of 12,000 properties that will go back into long-term rental. 
I think there's been a lot of confusion over this. Um, so we've conducted analysis of the scraped data, as Jenny says, and the figure of 12,000 is properties that may be suitable for long-term rental. It does not mean that 12,000 properties will go back to long-term or go into long-term housing. That is not uh, what we've been saying. Uh, we've done further analysis uh, of the numbers and we think it's less than 12,000, but a little bit more than 10,000. But again, to be clear, it is not that they will go back to long-term rental, it's that they may be suitable. What happens to those properties will be dependent on you as individual property owners, and maybe there might be more incentives from the state provided to help um, to help people to to move from tourism to long term rental. But we've never said that the properties will go back. Uh, we've said that they may be suitable for. Uh, Michelle has a couple of questions that she's going to answer next, and thank you for your time. Thanks, Virgil. Um... Again, in relation to the legislation, there are a couple of questions that um, uh, many people have asked. And one is, you know, what is this um, EU short term rental regulation that um, is being talked about? Basically, the European Commission published a proposed regulation for short term rental in November of 2022, which is mm, a number of weeks before we published our bill which aims to enhance transparency in the short-term rental market and to help public authorities ensure their balanced development as part of the sustainable tourism sector. This regulation aims to harmonise registration schemes for short-term tourist letting across the EU. It is still being developed and it's expected that the regulation will come into force across the EU in 2025 at the latest. Um, and while we work on our bill, we are trying to harmonise that with the EU proposal, obviously, at the same time. Another question in relation to the uh, legislation is what type of fines may be applied for non-compliance with the legislation? For property owners, where it is found that a short-term letting property is being advertised without a valid registration number, Fault Ireland may issue a fine in the form of fixed payment notice to the property owner. A period of time would be provided to the property owner to pay the fine. Where a fixed payment notice is ignored or goes unpaid, Fault Ireland will have powers to instigate prosecution in the district court in that instance. Then for platforms where a booking platform is publishing advertisements for a short-term letting property without displaying a valid registration number, Fault Ireland may issue a compliance notice instructing the platform to take action, for example, to remove the advertisement. Where the booking platform does not comply with a compliance notice, Fault Ireland may impose an administrative sanction in the form of a fine through the courts for each advertisement that is in breach of the requirements. Um, that's that. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand you back now to Jenny, who has further questions. Thanks, Michelle. So just finally, some of the questions that were on um, about the register. So a question, I am a third party. Will I be able to register multiple properties? So yes, it will be possible to register multiple properties using one login password on the short term uh, tourist letting portal. The onus will be on the property owner to ensure their property is registered. Uh, Fault Ireland are just providing the solution to help. And the, another question, how is the register going to be used once collected? So the register will allow Fault Ireland for the first time to have a full picture of the stock of tourism accommodation across the state. And that's going to significantly enhance our ability to promote and drive tourism investment. The data will also be available to both the booking platforms and to local authorities. Is the 21 nights in total? So no, the 21 nights is any period of time up to 21 nights in a given time frame, and not 21 nights in a year, etc. And then the final question is registration different than being quality assured? So as Fergal mentioned, yes, registration of the short term tourist letting register does not mean that a property is quality assured by Fault Ireland. Uh, the Fault Ireland NQAF ha was developed to provide visitors with the assurance that nationally recognised minimum standards are in place for the tourist accommodation. So thank you very much for the question. So just a final slide for me. Um, I suppose just looking at um, the 
next steps and kind of where um where are we going so as we've talked about here the legislation is progressing um it is uh it's, it's progressing through the legislative process with enactment expected in April uh, and draft uh, regulations are underway. We have the design complete for the online registration portal and user testing is underway. And we're involved in stakeholder engagement uh, and that is ongoing. So we've had several engagements with platforms and sector groups with this webinar today and we have a public information campaign launching soon. So I want to thank you all for your time today. Hopefully we've answered most of your questions and you now have clarity on the requirements of businesses and what will be involved in the registration process. The register is on track to launch in April, subject to enactment of legislation, and Fall to Ireland will publish guidance to assist with the completion of the registration form. And more information, including FAQs, is available on the Fall to Ireland website, and this webinar rec recording will also be available. So I'd just like to thank everyone for their time today. Thank Fergal and Michelle and Paul, and I wish you all a good season. Thanks a million.